Big game in the ACC and with major national implications as well. On homecoming here at Clemson on this gorgeous day, we say hello to Molly McGrath. Well, Sean, Syracuse's star corner Garrett Williams did not practice all week after suffering a reported thigh bruise in last week's game. And head coach Dino Babers told us that he traveled with the group this week to see if he could go and to go through warm-ups, but he's still in a considerable amount of pain and is extremely doubtful to play. Now, if Williams can't play, Dartmouth transfer Isaiah Johnson will make his first ever FBS start today. And Babers said with a playmaker like Williams injured, their D-line needs to be the star and step up their pass to help out their secondary. Also, an injury update for Clemson just coming across this morning. Their starting linebacker, Barrett Carter, is out of this game in a concussion protocol, Sean Todd. So a considerable loss for each team. And if Garrett Williams can't go, Todd, that's huge. Yeah, I would say that is a worse loss for Syracuse because not only is he a starter and a corner, he's a great player. Clemson won the toss and deferred. B.T. Potter touchback, that's nothing new. Syracuse has the ball first, led by Garrett Schrader. Started his career at Mississippi State, 14 games. Ten of them as a quarterback. The highlight play many remember against K-State when he went flying through the air. They had a coaching change. Joe Moore had to Mike Leach. Mike Leach moved to the wide receiver. He moved to Syracuse because he wanted to be a quarterback. Took over as a starter last year, much improved this year. Passing for 239 with 12 touchdowns and only three interceptions. And like DJ Uyunglele of Clemson, a threat to run as well. They open in the shotgun. Schrader showing that running ability right away. And a quality gain on first down. He got 11 out to the 36-yard line. Yeah, Schrader is playing with a chip on his shoulder, right, Sean? I mean, he gets moved to wide receiver. He finds a new home. And the improvement from last year to this year under the guidance of Robert and I, new offensive coordinator, and Jason Beck, the new quarterback coach, has been remarkable. Both of those coaches came over from Virginia. And they led one of the best offenses in the country last year. Schrader sacked. There are flags down. Yeah, this is going to be a break for Syracuse because personal foul, face mask, number 98 on the defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. The great Miles Murphy off a mammoth performance last Saturday night at Florida State. Yeah, he beats the left tackle, Bergeron, the best offensive lineman up there for Syracuse. And Garrett Schrader held that ball too long. He cannot hold the ball that long against this defensive front of Clemson was very fortunate the penalty bailed him out. But that was a bad decision by Schrader holding the football. Syracuse has had the ball first in all seven games now. They have scored on the opening drive in six of the seven. Well, the five of the six prior to today. They hope to make it six out of seven. Only Purdue kept them out of the end zone. Another run by Schrader. And they're down inside the 44-yard line. He's a very physical runner. You're, we're going to see both quarterbacks run, but they have a little different style. DJ's more of a make-you-miss guy. This is more of a run-you-over guy than Garrett Schrader. Swing pass out wide, Sean Tucker. Much more of a factor in the passing game this season with the new offensive coaches. Stop by Jeremiah Trotter at the 41. They'll need two on third down. You see, those are two of the big three. Sean Tucker, Alande Gadsden, they've got to touch the football a lot. We spoke to Dabble Sweeney yesterday, said for us, that's the game. Number six, number 19, and number 34. Schrader, Tucker, Gadsden, movement before the snap. Well, we mentioned, Sean, this is the first Ball road start. game in Off the conference. Yard penalty, third down. For Syracuse, and, and really only the second road game, period. You see, they've got to use a silent count. The center kind of dropped his head, and I think that movement is what was considered the false start. Wow. But silent count, first real road test. They were at UConn earlier, but this is different. They've got to be on, on the same page. I think Dino Babers liked the call. Third down and seven. Here's Schrader again. And a first down. 
first. Set sprawling through the air by Jalen Phillips, their safety. First series, we've already seen three design quarterback runs. These are not scrambles. These are called runs for the quarterback, and all of them have been effective for Garrett Schrader. He's a junior from not far away in Charlotte, North Carolina. There's Robert and I, the last six years at Virginia. Here's Tucker. Nifty moves to get inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Tripped up again by Jalen Phillips, their second leading tackler, senior safety from Lawrenceville, Georgia. Well, we've seen Schrader and we've seen Tucker, and it's about time that we see Gadsden touch the ball. Here he is right here. He's listed as a tight end, but they will line him up all over the field. Five plays, four runs, and the one short swing pass. They throw that again to Tucker, and he's dumped for no gain, perhaps even a loss. Justin Maskell, part of that deep defensive front, one of the best, probably the best defensive line group in the country. And, and it's a group that's getting healthy and getting all of their pieces back to the puzzle. I mean, they've got four or five NFL guys, but they've had different guys miss time because of injuries and other situations. This is the healthiest they've been. Todd McShay has Miles Murphy and Brian Brzee as two of the top eight players in next year's NFL draft. The other side for Tucker. Sean Tucker did not get to the first down marker, neither the 25. They'll have him out at about the 27. Sheridan Jones, a cornerback, made the play, and Dino Baber sends the field goal team out. We saw three design quarterback runs, and we saw three swing passes to Sean Tucker. Jersey number 87. So here's Andre Schmidt. Each team has a terrific kicker. Schmidt won the Lou Groves Award back in 2018. He is 11 out of 12 this year. This is a 46-yard attempt. Very light breeze in his face. There's a flag down, and it's no kick. The whistle stopped the play for timeout called by Syracuse before the snap. Prior to the play, clock expiring. Timeout. Syracuse, first charge, timeout. That was a great timeout because that was well timeout short. I mean, that kick seconds. had no chance. So the call to timeout, now maybe Dino wants to figure, well, do we go for it or kick it Well, it worked again? out well, but I don't think he knew it was going to be no. short when he called no, the he timeout. No, he didn't. He just knew the clock was going down, <laughs> but he got to see it, right? Well, he talked about Schmidt. Schmidt, that's 2018. He was the best kicker in the country. Wasn't quite as good for some time in between, but is back in great form. He said, we got our kicker back. He's back to being great this year. But he's bringing the offense back on the field now. I, I think what he saw there was like, okay, let's not put this on him right now. Let's put it in Garrett Schrader's hands. A run pass option on fourth and three. Well, he has a lot of belief. Schrader and his teammates determined to Prove that this 6 0 start is not a fluke. They're not surprised by their success. They hope to win more believers today. So going for it, four and a half minutes in. On fourth and three, deflected pass, and it's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Devon Cooper, and it was deflected out of the air. Now, by Ruka Rororo. Roro Rowe wasn't able to get home. Here he is right here working in the middle. Gets that right hand. Skycam, the sellout crowd at Memorial Stadium. Chilly start to the morning. It was in the 30s when we woke up. Expected to get into the low 70s. DJ Uyunglele looking deep, has a man deep, Davis Allen, the tight end, split the middle of the secondary and goes down inside the 30, 41 yards on the first play for Clemson and they are racing to the line of scrimmage to snap it again. Well, they faked the little shoulder fake by DJ and then he went down the middle, big play to start the first possession. They love their tight ends, Allen and Jake Brinningstool. 
Will Shipley, the ball carrier, like Syracuse. Clemson has one of the best running backs in the country in Shipley. DJ Uyunglele lost 30 pounds from a year ago. It's become more of a rushing threat with 55 per game, and over the last four games, throwing for 306 yards per game. Much better player than a year ago with a much better offense around him. And the two go hand in hand. Shipley to the 16 yard line. Tackled by Justin Barron. The uh, rover in this Syracuse defense that's been one of the best in the country to date. Yeah, and they've got to be aware of DJ running it in this part of the field. This is where they really like the quarterback run in the red zone. Mike Schrader, he is a willing runner. Out wide, Antonio Williams, the true freshman, having a magnificent season. That is his 25th catch. And that is seven more now than anybody else on the team. Not a big guy, not a speed burner, but catches everything thrown his way and gets open time and time again. This part of the field also they like Joseph and got it in the fade routes and this is the new corner right here That's the guy that Molly mentioned Isaiah Johnson the transfer from Dartmouth No Garrett Williams for Syracuse a big blow ripping up the middle Phil Matha Who's the backup running back? With explosive speed they're without Kobe pace today who generally splits the number two role behind Shipley with Matha very quickly Clemson in just five plays is down on the doorstep first and goal from the one extra tight ends on the field for the Tigers Shipley stuffed great knack for finding the end zone he already has eight rushing touchdowns in seven games he was stopped by Tatias gear part of the Front three for Syracuse. They're in a 3 3 5 alignment. Yeah, it was Gear and also Michael Jones, their leading tackler, the middle linebacker, finishing it off in there. Tough situation for this Syracuse defense right out of the gate. Shipley again. Touchdown, Clemson. Well, we saw Davis Allen with the big catch to first play. Watch him here. This is what he's known for as a blocking tight end. Just really clears the way for Shipley. Shipley gets right on his back and follows him into the end zone. Clemson, after the fourth down stop, they get the big play on first down and go right in the end zone for the first touchdown of the game. 20 career rushing touchdowns, and this is his 18th game. He missed three last year due to injury as a true freshman. BT Potter added the extra point. Now this was the first play. Watch when the pump fake happens. These defenders are thinking it's a short throw, and the tight end is going to come right in behind him. Watch the shoulders of DJ. Shrug, freezes the defenders, and a blink play right down the middle of the field to start the drive. Clemson has won played. the last four since, but uh, there have been a number, as we see, of uh, very close and exciting games, yeah. including last year when Clemson won by three. Syracuse had a chance to kick a field goal to tie yeah. in the last minute, and Andre Schmidt missed 48 yards. And I think this Syracuse team coming in today, said, even though they're in a hole quickly, very confident, seconds, please. not intimidated, playing against this Clemson team. 745, thank you. They're going to have to be uh, on their best. I mean, this is by far the toughest team they have faced this season. We were here together in 2018 for a classic game between these two teams. Syracuse led through much of it. And Clemson rallied the 94-yard drive at the end of the game, scored with under a minute to go to win 27-23. Another touchback by B.T. Potter. Second chance for Garrett Schrader in the orange after we check in with Kevin Nagandi. Good afternoon, Sean. Time now for our Mayhem Moment, brought to you by Allstate and Bug. First touchdown of Columbus. It's Iowa's defense. Yeah, a little tight end, a little tackle in stunt, and the defensive end, the sack, the call, fumble, the touchdown. Ooh, Joe Evans on the board. It's Iowa 7, Ohio State 3, very early at the shoe. Back to you. Kevin, thank you. 
Syracuse moved the ball in the opening possession of the game. Went for it on fourth and three for going a 46 yard field goal. And did not get it. Garrett Schrader throwing on target. And a nice catch up at the 43 yard line. Now Gadsden has such a great feel for whether it's man or zone. He recognizes zone defense, so he just finds the hole. And he shows his numbers to the to the quarterback, has a great understanding of how to run pass routes. Of course, his dad was an NFL player with the Dolphins. I'm sure he learned that at an early age. After the fake to Tucker, Schrader stood up at the 46-yard line by Jeremiah Trotter, the middle linebacker. There's Aronde Gadsden, wide receiver for the Dolphins back in the late 90s and early 2000s. And this Aronde is listed as a tight end, but he should probably just be called a slash because he'll line up in the slot, out wide in the backfield. Very skilled young receiver. And far and away, their leading receiver. Sean Tucker, the running back, their second leading receiver. Plenty of time for Schrader and another catch by Gadsden to the Clemson 37-yard line. And again, it's zone defense. You, you can tell zone by watching the linebackers drop. So Gadsden sees that, and he sits in right between the linebacker and the safety. That's good recognition and being on the same page, reading coverage with his quarterback. He's had several big plays. Including perhaps their biggest of the season, a 25 yard catch with seven seconds left to beat Purdue in the dome. Good throw by Schrader. And the orange inside the 15 yard line on a catch by Devon Cooper. This is wonderful protection because this is about the fourth read for Schrader. Watch how much time he has. He's going to look to Gadsden first on a little bit of a, an out and up. It's not there. He comes back to the backside on the in route. Plenty of time and a clean pocket to make that throw. For a 25-yard gain. Syracuse on the move for the second time. They're trying for Tucker. He's open on a wheel route and has a touchdown. This is beautiful work by Robert and I on a play calling because they've been running a lot of just flat routes. This time he's going to turn up and it's a defensive end, KJ Henry, who's in coverage. They've been running just flat route, flat route. Now he turns up and KJ Henry is beat right away. No chance. That's a mismatch in favor of Syracuse and the perfect time to change that route. Syracuse with a chance to tie the ball game. Robert and I has done such an outstanding job finding a way to get the ball into the hands of Syracuse's best playmakers. Tucker much more of a factor in the passing game this year. That's his second touchdown reception to go with six rushing. Schrader four for four on the drive for 18, 17, 25, and then the 12-yard touchdown to Sean Tucker. Now they got their guys involved, right? We talked about the big three. It started with throws to Gadsden, then it was Tucker. I mean, the, that's the, everything runs through those three guys. And Clemson knows it, Syracuse knows it, and that time, Syracuse with a beautiful drive. So both teams crisp on offense to start. It'll be DJ Uyunglele and Clemson back on the field, Molly, after the kickoff. DJ Huyangale said he played with the weight of the world on his shoulders, but said now he's never felt lighter or more confident. He credits that confidence to his work with their team sports psychologist, Dr. Milt Louder. DJ sought out Louder in February to work on his mental strength and to kind of get rid of the weight of everyone else's expectations. And they really worked hard on forgiving himself. DJ wanted to forgive himself for the mistakes that he made last year. They then focused on positive self-talk and the power of visualization. We Uncle uses visualization, meditation, and breathing exercises on game days to calm his mind and help his decision making. He said all of this has changed his confidence. He feels free and like a little kid playing now on the field. And the kickoff is a touchback, so here comes DJ again. 
He's a different man. You know, he played last year with a knee brace, with an injured finger as well. Dabo Sweeney felt like he took way too much of the blame yeah. for a 10-win season, which for some was a disappointment. Most programs, they celebrate that. He's a free guy now. I mean, he, he's free physically. He's healthy. He's free mentally, as Molly just reported. But the thing he did learn last year is dealing with adversity. I think it made him tougher, too. There's some mental toughness that came with enduring what he endured Ball last start. year, and now Offense he's using it all to his advantage. Five-yard penalty, first down. It's Blake Miller, the freshman right tackle, a, a really talented player. And he's had a few penalties in the last couple weeks. Big man, 6'6", 315 out of Strongsville, Ohio. Will Shipley taken down by Caleb Okachukwu, part of that front three for Syracuse, which comes in sixth in the nation in scoring defense, giving up just 13.2 points per game. They are 12th in the country against the pass. But as we've said a couple of times, a step up in competition here today. Just their second road game of the season. Uyunglele. Lighter, more agile, more confident. And gainer of a first down. And now some pushing and shoving. Joseph Ngata getting involved with Elijah Clark after the 14-yard gain. And there are flags down. Jeff Flanagan is leading this ACC crew. Well, we're going to see both these quarterbacks run a lot today. It's a big part of their first offense. First down after the play on sportsmanlike conduct, number 10 on the offense. It's a 15-yard penalty. It will be first down and 10. That's number 10's first on sportsmanlike conduct foul. Yeah, that was Joseph and Goddard just trying to pull a Syracuse defender off the pile. Justin Barron and uh, right in front of the officials. So... A, a not a very smart penalty from a veteran player like Ngata. They still have the first down, but they lose 15 yards after the game. And it is first and 10, but they're back on the 23-yard line. Clemson has won 13 in a row, the nation's longest active winning streak. They won the last six last year after they started four and three. Uwe Ungalale, lots of time, runs out of it, throws it into traffic incomplete, trying to get it to Bo Collins. And it was a low throw to his former high school teammate. The Syracuse defense, who has played so well, as you mentioned, it's a structurally, it's a 3-3-5. That time they only rushed three and dropped eight. And that's why DJ, even though he had protection, had nowhere to go with the football. Marlo Wax has gone to the sideline, one of the three linebackers, and their second leading tackler for the season. Again, playing without Garrett Williams, who they believe will be an NFL cornerback. After the play fake, high throw and a good catch along the near sideline. It's Antonio Williams again. He's 5'11", 190, true freshman from Irmo, South Carolina. You mentioned Wax going out of the game. They're already without Stephon Thompson, who was a, a really outstanding linebacker, hurt earlier in the season, gone for the rest of the year. They've had other guys step up in his absence. Wax looks like he's in considerable pain on the sideline. Garrett Williams really a cheerleader today. He had started 27 games for Syracuse. Including each of the last 10. Play clock running out. Third down and two. They just did get it off. In the flat. Caught first down. Out to the 35-yard line. It's Williams. Knocked down immediately by Isaiah Johnson. Who is the stand-in for Garrett Williams. And Todd played very well. Williams went out in the first yeah. half last week against NC State. Johnson came in and acquitted himself nicely. He's got length. He's six foot three. Pretty good instincts. Shipley tried to get outside and could not. Chopped down by Isaiah Johnson, a transfer from Dartmouth. When we talked to Tony White, the coordinator, about him. He said, he's a genius. I don't even like to talk to him because he's so smart. 
Well, that's a good sign right there on that play because the one thing they talk about Garrett Williams is how fierce of a run defender he is. He's a hitter in the run game, not just a cover corner. That time his replacement did a nice job. With Tony White, one of the rising stars in coaching. There's Shipley trying to get outside to the left. He can do it inside and outside. He has a first down in Syracuse territory. Stepped out at the 48-yard line, chased out by Jason Simmons. Well, the only way is they run this outside. Watch number six, E.J. Williams, the wide receiver, get a block. The only way you can run on the perimeter is if your wide receiver is blocked. That time it's E.J. Williams and Brandon Spector doing a nice job on the perimeter. Both of these teams have experienced offensive lines. Offensive line much more stable this year. They used seven different combinations last year. Up front, Uyangale throws. Nowhere near in Ghana. Well, they and closer to Isaiah Johnson of Syracuse. They tried to go after Isaiah Johnson with the pump fake. It was an out and up, and Isaiah Johnson did not bite. And DJ really nowhere to go with the football. It almost looked like he threw that away back towards the middle of the field. Wax still on the sideline and now in the medical tent. We're down to 208 to go in the first quarter. Fast moving opening quarter. Clemson with the ball for the second time. They marched right down the field on their opening possession. Here's Maffa. And he almost broke it. Knocked out of bounds by Jihad Carter, sophomore from Richmond, Virginia. You mentioned this offensive line for Clemson, how much better they are this year, how healthy they are, and they have a huge size advantage in this game. Syracuse's defense has played really well, but their defensive front is undersized. And because of that, they have to use a lot of movement, stunts, and twists. Sometimes they take themselves out of position and give up some big plays. Out of the pistol now, the keep by Uli Ungalale, and he gets dropped at the 40, short of the first down. Kayvon Darton, who made the tackle, is down. Come out. And he's another guy you talk about. Injury. Lack of size up front. He's 5'11, yeah. 266. Former walk on, put on scholarship just prior to fall camp. Dr. Pepper championship drive game of the week. Marlowe Wax back on the field for Syracuse. They were looking at his right shoulder. And Clemson's going to go for this on fourth down and two at the Syracuse 40. Well, you've got the quarterback run possibility, but I'd keep my eye on 84 Davis Allen. A good play action. They like to throw to him in situations like this. Uyungle pitches it out wide. First down, Mafa. Avoided a tackle right at the line to gain. Got away from Jihad Carter and has a first down after a gain of five. This is a kind of a funky kind of option. I mean, DJ has the option to run this, but they're optioning the end man on the line. But instead of the typical option pitch, it's an underhand toss, and Moffa gets the first down. We're under a minute to go in a very entertaining first quarter. Moffa. Stopped after a gain of two. I think a guy who probably hasn't gotten enough attention or credit so far this year for Clemson, and this is the third time we've seen the Tigers in person, is Brandon Streeter, yep. the offensive coordinator. Yep. This is a team that has scored at least 30 points in every game. He's in his first year as the play caller. And I think he's done a terrific job. Yeah, I do too. He's got a, He's on the same page with DJ. They've got a good feel for each other. And I think they spread the football around really well. They have a lot of weapons, and they get it to everybody. Allen dropped the ball in the flat. Unusual for the senior from Calhoun, Georgia. Brandon Streeter had been the quarterback coach since 2015, also for many years on staff, the recruiting coordinator, played a big part in all the talent they brought here. He took over when Tony Elliott left to become the head coach at Virginia. Final 11 seconds of the quarter. They are in field goal range. On third down and eight. Louis Ungle away plenty of time, and it is intercepted. Was he in bounds is the question. Yes, say the officials. Jahad Carter with the pick at the 15-yard line.
First down for the defense. And Jahat Carter read that perfectly. There's the foot down, actually two feet down, controls the football. The ball hangs in the air a little bit going for Ngata, and Carter undercuts it and makes the play. Take a look from the progressive pylon cam. Not only one foot down, but two foot down that secures the catch. Beautiful play on the interception. And our camera person in that pylon does a great job of knowing <laughs> when to shoot up the sideline or when to shoot across the goal line. Perfect view of it there. And Syracuse has the ball back for the third time. Short pass, Trevor Pena. Ripped down after a three-yard gain on what will be the last play of the quarter. Tackled by Keith McGuire. Jahad Carter, his first interception of this season. The third of his career. He's a sophomore from Richmond, Virginia. ESPN's presentation of college football on ABC will return after this message and a word from our ABC State. Michigan, 5-1. and one. Jahad Carter, the interception. First turnover of the game by either team. Start of the second quarter, tied at seven. Schrader got away from Brian Brzee and managed to get back toward the line of scrimmage. Tyler Davis brought pressure, but Brzee had his hands on Schrader and couldn't get him down. Yeah, these two on the inside again, they've missed time, both of them. But they are so good on the inside, 11 and 13. They push the pocket. Brzee with the quick move just beats the right guard right away, but can't get the big quarterback to the ground. Dabo Sweeney told us last year there are three times he was certain they had Schrader sacked and they couldn't get him onto the ground. He takes off running, has a long way to go. He's going to get nowhere near the 25. Ruka Roro, -Ro -Ro, who's a backup, he'd be a starter on just about any other team in the country. As a matter of fact, Todd McShay has him rated as about a fourth round pick in the NFL draft, but not one of the starting front four. Clemson, when they are at their best defensively, they get a negative yardage play on first or second down. And that's what they got. Even though they get the sack. Max von Marburg on the punt for the first time. And a good one. Sends Will Taylor back there is 40. Gets away from several Syracuse coverage men. Looked like he go down right on the catch. And instead he brought it back for five yards after a 44-yard punt. We talked about these quarterbacks, Todd, and the comparisons are almost scary when you look at the numbers, nearly identical in passing yards per game, yeah. rushing yards per game. They're similar size and both much improved oh, yeah. over a year ago. Yeah, I mean, both of them have taken their game to a completely new level. I mean, and just quarterback efficiency or quarterback rating off the charts this year compared to a year ago. Ooh, young Lelay handed it off. And that was almost taken the distance by Will Shipley. Deuce Chestnut tripped him up, or that might have been six for the Tigers. Another nice block by the tight end, Davis Allen, and Walker Parks. The right guard comes around and gets a nice block. And, and Shipley, they're just going to continue to feed him. They gave him the ball 26 times last week. Ian Maffa, nice combo. Yeah, Maffa. 6'1", 230, powerfully built, but has speed as well. He gets 10. Shipley lost a shoe on the previous play. They are without Kobe Pace, who rushed for 76 against Syracuse last year, out with an injury. They expect him back in another week or two. Yeah, last week, they really fed him the football. We did the BC game, and Brandon Streeter said, we didn't give him the ball enough. They were kind of sluggish in the first half. They took control of the game in the second half. But this kid is, I think he's the key to their offense. Sophomore from the Charlotte area. Uyungle hit as he throws into double coverage and incomplete. Trying to get it to Adam Randall, five-star recruit at wide receiver. And oh, no. Chestnut is oh, on no. the ground and grabbing at his knee. Defensive and that does injury. not look good. Their other starting corner, they're playing without Garrett Williams. 
Chestnut's the other standout. They think both he and Williams will be NFL players. Well, Chestnut was beat, but the ball was underthrown, and that enabled oh, the defenders boy. to get there. And Deuce Chestnut did not look good. Right knee twists awkwardly right there. That's Jeremiah Wilson now. He's the new corner and a true freshman. It was good to see Deuce Chestnut jog off the field. Not sure when he can return, though. Wilson has coverage on Collins. It's a run play. Shipley got stood up and sent back by Marlo Wax. Sophomore from Baltimore. Here's the play when Chestnut got hurt. It was really a well-designed play by Clemson. You can see the receiver faking because they were faking a quick throw the other side. He's beat Chestnut. The ball is underthrown. And Elijah Clark, the safety coming over, is the guy that they thought might have been interfering with him, but no penalty. You saw the tape of Chestnut jogging off. Pressure, good call against the pressure. It's a screen to Shipley. And a first down. And like Sean Tucker, his opposite number, Shipley adept in the passing game as a receiver as well. Yeah, I think both those guys are much more active in the passing game this year because really, this is like an outside run. Rather than bang him inside between the tackles all the time, get him out in space, get a couple blockers in front, and it's like a perimeter run without the headaches. Clemson on the move. Brandon Spector. One in motion, Phil Maffa. Quality gain, he got about eight. Here's Molly McGrath. Q's corner Deuce Chestnut was yelling in pain and frustration as athletic training staff tended to his right knee. In the medical tent, they tested the mobility of his knee with no issues, and he nodded to his teammates, put his helmet on, and said, I'm good. So he's warming back up on the sidelines, guys. Well, they've had a lot of key injuries. Battled through it to get to 6-0. and Stephon Thompson. One of their best defensive players injured in the opener against Louisville. Terry Lockett was the starter on the defensive line. Phil Maffa trying to get the first down yardage at the 13. Taken back by Justin Barron. And it is a first down. Maffa is really a good combination with Shipley. Hard to tell from that. Got a good spot. Line, yeah. Ball never got to the yellow line. Maffa goes in motion. They swing it out wide to him. Has blockers. Maffa inside the five. And it looks like another Clemson first down. Jeremiah Wilson, the freshman corner, still in there. And he made the tackle. The same thing. This is this is two blockers out, and it's a it's like a perimeter run. It's a pass, but you've got two blockers in front of a talented running back. He has one guy to make miss, and it's a very positive game. Deuce Chestnut back in for Syracuse. Tied at seven. More than five minutes into the second quarter. On a sun splash day in Clemson, South Carolina. Maffa, the running back. And Balls out. Angle, they fumbles the football. It is scooped up by Syracuse. It's Jahad Carter, and nobody is going to catch him. There are no flags on the play. Touchdown, Syracuse. 90 yards. Sean, DJ Uyunglele, who likes to run in the red zone, held the ball in the mesh point too long. It was a fumble. Covered by the defense. He's also plays a touchdown. He hesitated. Watch the mesh point between he and Maffa. He's got to make a decision. Either give it to Maffa or keep it. Held it in there too long. And the ball was knocked out by Chestnut from behind. Duke Chestnut came. Deuce Chestnut came from behind the play. Knocked the ball out. The Marlo only question in there as well. Yeah. The only question is, was his knee down before the ball came out? Exception. And now the fumble return for a touchdown. And apparently it's been confirmed by replay because they're going to kick the extra point. What a turnaround. I mean, Clemson on the move, about to score. 
And instead, not just a stop, but a stop and a score for the Orange. Andre Schmidt adds the extra point. Well, Clemson, one of the best teams in the country in turnover margin. Minus two today. Two big plays by Jihad Carter. And a lead for Syracuse at Clemson. Here's Brady Denneberg with the kickoff. Will Shipley will bring it back. He returned one 69 yards last week at Florida State. The second half kickoff, and that set up a touchdown on the very next play. Gives them very good field position here at the 36-yard line. Delish sisters. It yeah, looked delish. It was. It really was. And, and again, the mission was so great. The idea came from Rick Haydick, who started the hotel and the restaurant, and uh, he has two children with special needs and, and wanted to do this, and it's a great concept, and they'd love to try to take that concept to other universities that have a similar program like the Clemson Life program here uh, to empower and employ uh, people with special needs. So it was great food, but it was a great concept and mission as well. Dabo Sweeney closely yeah, involved with it as right. well. From the 36, here's Maffa. Out to the 44-yard line, where they have a terrific tandem with he and Shipley. That's an eight-yard gain for Maffa, sophomore from Loganville, Georgia. Yeah, I mean, Clemson really has not been stopped by Syracuse today. They've stopped themselves. I mean, and the combination of the two runners, Shipley and Maffa, is really an outstanding one-two punch. Very different styles. Maffa remains the running back. And he got enough for the first down. Well, we talked about the turnovers. Clemson, in each of their last 11 games prior to today, have been even or plus in turnover margin. And that's a big reason why yeah. they've won 13 in a row, the longest active winning streak in the country. The minus two today, and you saw the number. Syracuse had only seven takeaways all of last season when they went five and seven. They now have 11 this year. They stick with Maffa. He's across midfield to the Syracuse 47. Here's what's evident right now, and, and we talked about this in a break. We were here in 18 when this was a great game, right, between Syracuse and Clemson. And Trevor Lawrence got hurt and changed their whole game plan. But we knew then that Syracuse believed they were good enough to win, and this team right here feels like they believe they're good enough to win. They are very competitive, and they're not backing down from this challenge at all. They mentioned five and seven a year ago, but they had three straight losses in the middle of the year by three points. They felt last year could have been much different. Shipley, the ball carrier, to the 43-yard line. Looks to be a little bit short of the first down. And you and I talked to a lot of players, a lot of coaches, and sometimes you, they say things like, we believe, and we're going to show people we really are a good team. You think, eh. But they said it convincingly yeah. with conviction. And they have a lot of talent to back it up. They, they have talent, and when you have confidence like they have being undefeated, sometimes you play even better than you actually are because you expect to make the plays. Third down and one, perhaps four down territory if they need it. They don't. Shipley slides through to the 41-yard line, tackled by Michael Jones, one of the three linebackers who posted an article in Players' Tribune earlier this week talking all about that, the belief that they have in themselves, in each other. He said some of that belief came from that 1-10 in 10 season. Shipley. They are sticking with the ground game, and yeah, effectively so. They're sticking with it, but I think they're also setting up Syracuse for a play-action deep shot. I mean, they, they've got to get a chunk play, try to get Antonio Williams involved, their leading receiver, and the running game sets that up. Mitchell Mays has come in at tackle, a backup, number 77 for Clemson. Shipley again. Again, you look at this defense and you see, okay, it's a 3 3 5. So there looks like they should be able to just run with ease, and they're not that big up front, which is another 
thing that makes you think we should be able to overpower them, but they're very aggressive and they're physical and the movement, the stunts and the twists kind of helps it out and plays to their strength and their quickness. Dabo Sweeney says Syracuse pretty much moves that front on every play. Significant size advantage for the Tigers. Uyunglele pulled it down. They're not very big, but they're stout. They stopped the big quarterback, Big Cinco, as he's known, short of the line to make. And it was Come Jones out. leading the way again. Off. Defense, 40-second clock, please. And what will Dabo do here on fourth down and short, fourth and about a yard and a half? They are in field goal range for E.T. Potter, one of the strongest legs in the country. I think right now this is an attitude decision by Dabo. You know, and saying, look, we hurt ourselves down there at the goal line before. We've got good movement, good push. Let's go for it here on fourth and two. Maffa is the running back as they set up in the pistol. All eight plays on this drive have been runs. Under five to go till halftime. The option, Uyunga the lay, lunges, and it is going to be close. Yeah, if he made it, he made it just barely. Doesn't look like it by that spot of the ball. He lunged forward off the initial hit to get close. We saw a big fourth down stop by the Clemson defense in the first quarter. Does the Syracuse defense answer? He tried to reach the ball to the line, even though his body was not going to get there. And it all comes down to the spot. Steve Linton, Leon Lowry in there for Tony White. And the defense makes another big play for the Orange. Tony White and his defense proving that their stats weren't just a byproduct of playing less than stiff competition. Well, we're back at Clemson. The play was reviewed and the call stands. Watch these two players, the lineman Linton and Hannah, the secondary guy. Linton is going to cut inside and make first contact on DJ Uyunglele, and then he's going to get wrapped up in help from Rob Hanna, and they stop DJ, the big quarterback, short on fourth down. What a great goal, a uh, fourth down stand by this Syracuse defense. They have the ball and a seven-point lead with 440 to go. Schrader's pass batted right back into his face. He's now 8 out of 10. He's thrown only one incompletion. Second time they've knocked the ball down, and I think it's Rook again. He had the first one. He got the second one. And if you're an offensive lineman, you can't allow that guy to just stay disengaged with eyes on the quarterback. you got to do something to get those hands down. Schrader in the single coverage, caught far sideline, first down. It's Rondé Gadsden with an up catch to the 44. Here's Kevin. Good run for him. Apparently caught Kevin by surprise. <laughs> 12-yard gain, first down. Sean Tucker turns the corner. Yeah. Sean Tucker has another first down to the Clemson 43-yard line. Well, we just saw Aronde Gadsden with the beautiful catch on the back shoulder throw. And on this play, he's the lead blocker. This is what makes him so versatile. Out of the backfield, getting the block. Hands are on the inside on Sheridan Jones. Back-to-back -back play, Syracuse across the 50. Jackson's a big guy, 6'5". LaQuint Allen in it running back. He did well to get a yard or two. He very infrequently carries the ball. They lean very heavily on Tucker. Allen's the number two running back. And that's just his 16th carry of the year in game number seven. Tucker on the sideline.
Empty backfield. Gadsden's right here. Schrader short set on target. Flag down. Catch made short of the first down by Trevor Pena. Tyler Venables made the tackle. Looks like they're signaling offsides on Clemson. Lined up offsides because there was no movement. Offside, defense number 98. The penalty is five yards from the previous spot. It's still second down. Miles Murphy for Wes Goodwin in his first year as the defensive coordinator. Tyler Venables made the last tackle. His dad, Brent, was the defensive coordinator here. He left to be the head coach at Oklahoma. Wes Goodwin was an off the field assistant for the defensive staff. Schrader has running room and speed. Schrader inside the 15 and out of bounds. Malcolm Green took him out at the 12-yard line. Well, you mentioned the speed. I mean, he sees some grass, but Jeremiah Trotter, number 54, has an angle on him. The middle linebacker coming right there, but Schrader's speed outran the angle. And it's a big play for the quarterback. 25 yards, longest Syracuse run today. They're poised to take a two-score lead approaching halftime. This is a part of the game that Clemson usually dominates the middle eight, the four minutes prior to the half and the opening four of the second half. Schrader, excellent fake to Tucker, and he slithers inside the five. Yeah, I mean, you have to respect Tucker, right? That, that's out. why that play fake play is so good, and the quarterback Shorts, run out. in this part of the field is so effective. Clemson defense on its heels. Dabo Sweeney has called the timeout with 2.03 remaining in the half. Started with this fourth down stop, a beautiful stop of DJ Uwe Ungalale, and then his counterpart, Garrett Schrader, with a 25-yard run. And all of a sudden, Syracuse inside the five-yard line with a chance to open up a two-score lead. Second and two. West Cole has come in at fullback, and nothing doing on the run there. John Tucker stacked up for a loss. Well, what hurt this play, Sean, was a bad snap. The snap was high. It broached up the timing of the play. Schrader had to go up to get this to his left. That disrupted the timing of the handoff, and Tucker was not able to hit that hole full speed. They're pulling the left tackle, Matthew Bergeron, part of a very good offensive line. In recent years when Syracuse has struggled, the line play, Time out. not we'll good. But Dino Babers said uh, in his seven years, he thinks this is probably the second best yeah. offensive line they've had after only the 2018 team that won 10 games. It was the only winning season that Coach Babers has had at Syracuse prior to this year. This is a very important year for Dino Babers. He was clearly on the hot seat, if you will. And uh, that obviously has gone away with the 6-0 start. Well, the, he's right about the offensive line. And, and all you have to do is watch the first half of this game against an NFL-caliber defensive front of Clemson. They have protected their quarterback. They've opened up running lanes. And they're threatening again right here. 138 combined career starts up front. So the two guys that you've got to pay attention to if you're Clemson on this third and five. Three guys. There they are. Gadsden, Tucker, Schrader. One of those three guys is going to have to make the play here for the Orange. And shifted Max Mang, the other tight end of the backfield. Schrader takes off running. Schrader for the pylon. Touchdown. Syracuse. Seven yards for Garrett Schrader. We've seen designed runs by Garrett Schrader. This is a scramble. Look, he's looking left. He's looking to Gadsden. It's not there. He knows he's got a lane, and he knows he's got the toughness to get to the pylon. And Garrett Schrader gets in the end zone. Well, the coaches describe him as a baller, and I think that is dead on. Lunging for the pylon with the progressive pylon camera inside. What a first half for 
Garrett Schrader, 9 out of 11 passing for 90 yards and a touchdown. He's their leading rusher with 67 yards and a touchdown. The defense has scored once, and Schmidt makes it a 14-point lead for Syracuse with a minute 53 to go in the half. Time left for Clemson. Dabo Sweeney used some timeouts to give the offense time. And here's Kevin Nagandi. On Capital One Halftime Report, just minutes away, Booger McFarland, Kevin Nagandi here with you. Biggest deficit for Clemson of the season. What's Syracuse doing so well? Well, Garrett Schrader's playing well, but they're dominating Clemson up front. The offensive and the defensive line, and if you're Dabo Sweeney, you can talk about a lot of things, but your guys up front have to play better. We will see how they respond. Meanwhile, Iowa and that defense holding things down at the shoe. Defense always travels, Kev. We will see how <laughs> that plays out with our highlights coming up. Sean, back to you. All right, Kevin, thank you. Now, Sean, I feel the lack of, uh, you feel the nervousness yeah. in the crowd here. They're not used to seeing this. They haven't trailed at the half at home since 2020, a memorable game. They were down by 15 to Boston College. DJ Uwe Ungo Lay started that game. He brought them back, one of the biggest comebacks in school history. Well, it's interesting because for the second week in a row, Clemson's vaunted defense is struggling tackling a quarterback. They had trouble with Jordan Travis last week in Tallahassee, and a different style quarterback in Garrett Schrader today, causing them fits as well. Brady Denenberg with the touchback. Kick off your week seven NFL Sunday tomorrow, 10 a.m. The countdown crew on ESPN and the app. Breaking stories, injury updates, previews of every game right up to the kickoff. And then Monday Night Football caps off week seven on ESPN. The poor taste in the app. The Bears and the Patriots. Peyton and Eli will be on ESPN too. Patriots now three and three. Bailey Zappi has made it a bit of a quarterback <laughs> controversy in New England. If Mac Jones is healthy, will he play? Probably yes. But Zappi's proved to be a very good Draft pick by Matt Groh. Will Shipley, not much there. Chased out by Isaiah Johnson. Boy, it's about as quiet as you'll ever hear it here. And another injured Syracuse defender, it's Derek McDonald. Injury. And he became a starter when Stephon Thompson went down in the opening game against Louisville. Redshirt freshman from Atlanta. We're back in eight seconds. First to look from Ram Trucks. Ram Trucks built to serve. And McDonald, the player down, they've really been pleased with him. He's been a real surprise. Good to see him up on his own power walking off. Very under-recruited guy out of high school and had to really step in when Stephon Thompson got hurt. And again, they've got lots of stories like that on this defense. Guys that were, you know, you look at this nose guard right now, Kayvon Darton, number 45. I mean, he, he does not look like a, a power five ACC nose tackle. I mean, his shirt's out and he's short, but he plays with natural leverage and he plays with tremendous toughness and he can hold his own. He almost didn't come back this year to Syracuse. He mentioned he was a walk on. Had some health issues in his family. They're thrilled he came back. He is on scholarship. There's a catch and a first down. Joseph Ngana out to the 38-yard line. Plenty of time for Clemson, a minute yeah. 44 and a timeout. Very important part of the game for Clemson. Remember, they won the toss and deferred, so they'll get the ball to start the third quarter. They have an opportunity to really kind of get the momentum back and hopefully get their crowd back in the game as well. Quick slant catch. Good catch by Antonio Williams. The ball a little bit behind him, as Brandon Streeter told us. He catches everything. They can't recall that he's had a drop yet in his freshman season. That's a 12-yard gain. They're quickly to the 50-yard line Pretty with a minute soft. and a half to go. Yeah, soft coverage so far. I would expect Syracuse to tighten up a little bit. Here's Ngata weaving through the traffic, and he's upended. At the 32-yard line, 18 more. The tackle for Isaiah Johnson. And Syracuse just rushing three, trying to drop eight, keep everything in front. And DJ's doing a good job of not forcing anything, taking what the defense gives him. 
Now they bring pressure. It's picked up. Davis Allen the catch. And out of bounds at the 23 yard line. Dabo Sweeney says Syracuse blitz is about 50% of the time. That's a high percentage. And they do it from a lot of different places. All passes on this possession. The waning moments of the half. Trying to take momentum into the locker room. Get the crowd back into it. Uyunglele has completed seven in a row. Weird looking play. It's supposed to be a handoff. Yeah, he missed Shipley it. didn't yeah. know it. Yeah, but the good thing that DJ did on second and one is he followed exactly where the play was supposed to go. It's a delay draw. He missed the handoff. So instead of running outside, he runs right where the play was blocked to go and picks up the first down. Under a minute to go. In the half, all day for Uwe Ungolay against Syracuse rushes only three. And the ball thrown away. Good coverage in that drop eight. Now, even if you release five defender or receivers, if you only rush three, I mean, you can cover four or five receivers very easily. You drop eight guys, you keep everything in front, eyes on the quarterback, there's nowhere to go with the football. Tony White learned under one of the masters of this 3-3-5 defense has become very popular. Rocky Long coached Tony White when he was in college. They've coached together. Louis Ungolle running out of time, and he goes down. Swung down back at the 32-yard line. Kevin Chobity, the backup Talk defensive about. end. Well, this is on DJ. He's got to get rid of the football. First of all, he bobbles it, and that's maybe why he didn't throw it away. But you cannot take a sack here. It's a three-man rush. You've got five blockers. If it's not there, either run it or throw it away. But he lost control of the football, and when that happened, he got a little discombobulated, and Jobity was able to get there and get the sack. Jobity. Looked like he was getting ready to, to, I'm not sure what he was doing, spinning the fall, getting the laces, and then he lost control. And when that happened, Syracuse was able to get to him. But what a costly mistake in a critical time right there by DJ. And the play by the true freshman backup up front, Jobity, his first career sack. And Clemson had to use that timeout. I mean, you know, so everything was bad as a result of that play. And I would expect another three-man rush with a drop eight. Syracuse has 21 yards to play with here on third down. They are in field goal range for Potter. Four wide receivers. Uyunglele checks it down for Shipley, and he stopped at the 26. That's 16 yards short of the first down. Now they have to run the field goal team on because they don't have a timeout they have plenty of time to get set yeah and you practice this all the time so this is not a uh, a unique situation in fact they're probably going faster than they need to bt potter a 44 yard try and it is good give Dabo sweeney some credit because he used those timeouts on defense to give his team some time when they got the ball back and they used almost all of that time to get some yeah. points well they needed that you know they needed to do something to get some momentum to take to the locker room try to get this big crowd back in the problem is they've got to figure out you know how to compete particularly in the trenches with this Syracuse team I mean I think Syracuse has outplayed them at the line of scrimmage both quarterbacks have made plays both backs have made plays but right now I think the difference in the game is in the trenches Syracuse has the upper hand and the turnover so that those are the two biggest stories of what we've seen so far well, one of the storylines all week they talked about it on game day this morning is Syracuse for real? You know, they play one of the weakest schedules in the country to this point. They want yeah. them all. All you can do is beat the people that you play. Have you seen enough yet to say 
they're for this real. is the best I've seen them. Now, I watched them on film. They very easily could have lost to Purdue, right? They very easily could have lost to Virginia, but they found ways to win. And today they are playing at a different level. I think they're playing like a very confident team. And this is the best that I've seen them look so far this year. They have risen to the occasion for sure. This is their second road game, and the other one was at UConn. First conference road game. Potter's kickoff is a touchback. There's the student section. Not very active right now. They're it not used quiet. to this. <laughs> so the Taco quiet. Bell Live Moss student section. Student sections around the country continue to be the Live Moss student section of the year. All season long, Dino Babers quick to point out to us during the week that their students and their fans have been a big part of this 6 and 0 start. They had a sellout crowd last week for NC State. They have Notre Dame coming next weekend. Well, they had they broke the huddle with 12 the guys. Offense. There's 12 men in formation. <laughs> Five just... yard penalty. Still first down. Well, if you're going to do that, now's the time. Yeah, they're just trying they're to kneel down. <laughs> yeah. And Syracuse. 6-0 despite being one of the most penalized teams in the country. More than 70 yards per game of penalties. 117th, but they've played a clean first half. Penalized just twice. Trying to end Clemson's 37-game home winning streak. Syracuse 21-10 with the lead at the half. Here's Molly. Coach, when you get into that locker room, what will you say to your defense? First of all, we, it's, I'm going to start to our offense. We, 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 two turnovers. I mean, you know, one for a 98-yard touchdown fumble on the one. So we got to finish on offense, first of all. We can't turn the ball over. You know, that's that's first and foremost. You know, so, and then defensively, we, you know, you know the quarterback's a threat. We know that. So that's two third and sevens that he's that he's made big plays on. So we got to tighten up on him. And uh, But the main thing, we got to stop these self-inflicted wounds. We've had penalties. We've had face masks. Some, some dumb stuff, but hey, we get the ball, see if we can get back in it. All right, thanks, Coach. At the half, Syracuse 21, Clemson 10. We'll send you to the studio for the Capital One Halftime Report after this message and a word from our ABC stations. The road. This is the only way defensive players get our name in the paper when we do something like this. His name is Jahad Carter, number one of the house, 90 yards, and Syracuse up 21 to 10. Clemson, they've won 37 straight at home. That's in serious jeopardy. When you see the numbers, what's the story? Well, the story's the line of scrimmage. We can talk about the quarterbacks, and Garrett Schrader has been outstanding, but if you look at Syracuse, what they're doing, up front, the offensive line, particularly their defensive line, they're outweighed by 45 pounds, only yep. averaging 255. They're dominating this game right and now. And that bottom line there, two turnovers by DJ yes. Uyunglele. He had three coming into the game all season. And right now, the Tigers down by 11. Meanwhile, over at the shoe, how about Ohio State? Favored by 30 points against Iowa. That's the largest spread the Buckeyes have had against the Hawkeyes since 1978. CJ Shroud, uh oh, in some trouble here. More defense. Love to play. Little tackle in stunt. The end comes under, underneath the Holy Trinity care of the sack that calls fumble the touchdown. And Joe Evans getting his name in the paper, but here comes Mayan Williams. Here comes that Buckeyes Pono. It's amazing. When they want to be physical, it's Mayan. What are you doing? Like, what are you doing on this fourth and six? I'm not sure, but the way the Hawkeyes offense looks, you got to try every trick. Yeah, sometimes kickers, man. Just kick the ball. Yeah, then Spencer <laughs> Petras. I mentioned their offense. Yee, not good. Tommy Eichenberg to the house. I mean, the Hawkeyes offense is really tough to watch. If they could do anything. Yeah, they they're be. playing well. They just have no offense, and their defense hung around as long as they could. 26 to 10, Ohio State, number two team in the land. How about the number three team in the land coming off that hangover? Oh, no carryover here in Knoxville as Tennessee taking on UT Martin. Nice play there. Dresser win to Colton Dow for 41 yards. Yeah, nice over-the-shoulder catch there. And then watch the wide receiver crack the defense. Their easy walk-in touchdown. Zoe Roberts into the end zone, and that's the highlight for yep, that was it. <laughs> Team Martin. That's it. Here comes the volunteer attack. It feels like no one can stop this offense. Well, Kev, okay, it's an offense. They spread you out 53 and a third, the width of the field, and they make you defend it all. And right now, Hendon Hooker is playing.
playing as good as any player in the country. He should be the front runner for the Heisman. Over C.J. Stroud. Absolutely. Better offense, Ohio State or Tennessee? Ohio State has more weapons. Tennessee's functioning better. Jalen Hyatt right there. Look, they don't have such utility. It does not matter. Again, and if Tennessee Martin would tackle, maybe that would matter, but they <laughs> didn't. That's, that's true. <laughs> They're still in the first half, and the Volunteers have put up 52. Maybe they'll go running clock in the second <laughs> half. They might have to. That's a first-half game for Hendon Hooker. That game on SEC Network. Meanwhile, Cincinnati, they won five straight. Ryan Montgomery going in on the road against SMU. And Charles McClellan, this is the longest Bearcat run of the season, 76 yards. Yeah, and I love the offensive line blocking. How about the Cincinnati team? They go to Arkansas, now they come back to the south in Dallas, and they put the whooping on SMU. Luke Fickle quietly getting the team back yeah. on track. They lost a lot of key players on offense and defense from a year ago. Tanner Mordecai, flea flicker, and he finds Jordan Curley to the six-yard line. Yeah, nice play, one-on-one. -on -one. Wide receiver cut in front of the safety. Nice throw there by Mordecai. All right, right now, that game, 20-14 to 14 over on ESPN Cincinnati with the lead. Duke, Miami, both teams looking for their second win of the ACC. Riley Leonard, well, this is Tyler Van Dyke. Van Dyke finding Colby Young for the seven-yard touchdown. And then here's Riley Leonard. You love to see this from the quarterback, the toughness. I love the play, though, Kev. When you're down, spread them out, empty formation, fake the run, and now go downhill. He goes up the middle for the nine-yard score and then off a muff. Here's Leonard again calling his number and then the power. And the reason it works so well, Kev, as a defense, we don't count the quarterback as a runner, so you get an extra blocker when you run the quarterback. And Duke had taken a lead off that uh, mistake here, right? Coming your way. There it is, and there goes the ball. Boop. Blue Devils now a couple yards away from the red zone, and there is Leonard. And we just showed this to you again. Yeah, I mean, exactly. It's the same analysis. Same, <laughs> same Rewind. analysis. What I said before. Yeah, exactly. On ESPN from Memorial Stadium in Clemson, South Carolina. We welcome you back to ESPN College Football on ABC, presented by Arby's. Clemson's won 37 in a row here. Back to 2016, but at the half, they're down to Syracuse, 21 to 10. The undefeated Orange, impressive on both sides of the ball. Two takeaways by the defense. Yeah, the takeaways are really the story of the game. I mean, Clemson was nearing the red zone. The DJ is picked off. John Carter with a great play. And this was a 14-point play. I mean, this was a fumble at the one-yard line, scooped up and returned for a touchdown. I mean, Clemson's on their way in. You wonder how important are turnovers. Clemson in the first half ran 23 more plays, gained 85 more yards, but have 11 fewer points because of those turnovers. And so uncharacteristic, as we mentioned, they've been either even or plus in the turnover margin in each of their last 11 games. Uh, they've played very clean football throughout. Uh, this is reminiscent of the game uh -huh. in 2018 between these two teams when Syracuse had a nine-point lead at the half. Yeah, and I think the, the most similar characteristic of it to me is that this is a Syracuse team that believes that they should be here. This is no fluke. They believe they can win the game, and uh, Clemson's going to have their hands full here at home in the second half. Syracuse has never won in Death Valley. 0-4 all-time here. Garrett Schrader had 157 yards of total offense in the first half. He'll watch as Clemson gets it first. The Brady Denneberg kickoff brought back across the 25 by Will Shipley. Back in 2018, it was the first career start for Trevor Lawrence, named the starter as a true freshman earlier in the week. He got knocked out in the second quarter. Syracuse in the fourth quarter goes for him fourth and one gets it. They have an ineligible man downfield penalty. Dino Babers is still mad about that. Then Chase Bryce, who came in for Trevor Lawrence, completed a huge pass on fourth and six. They'll remember forever here at Clemson. Travis Etienne scored the go-ahead touchdown. He was brilliant that game with 203 yards. Really wore down the Syracuse defense in the fourth quarter. Will Shipley, the ball carrier. That's a four-yard gain, and Dino Babers has not forgotten that no. Hyman downfield no. call. One of those things he felt like he'd call it at any time. Well, that was a tremendous college football game, and Chase Bryce, they went on and won the national championship yep, that year. That's right. After beating Syracuse. Chase Bryce now at Appalachian State. I think his third stop, right? Yeah, he went to do Duke first. from here. Louis Underlay tripped up when it looked like he might 
Break away. He's to the 40. And a Clemson first down that brings the crowd back to life. Here's Molly McGrath. Well, Syracuse's head coach Dino Babers most impressed with his defense's mental toughness in the first half. He said we had a lot of injuries, a lot of backups are in, but they're competing their hearts out. And our backups are the players who impressed me most in the first half. He said, I know Clemson will come out of the locker room hot in this first drive and said, we'll try to answer and need to stay together and keep fighting. Mental toughness will be everything in the second half. Sure. All right, Molly, thank you. A little bubble screen for Ant Antonio Williams and stop for no gain. You know, one thing that is different to me, though, than from that 18 game is I look at this Clemson team and they've got really good players, but they don't have the T. Higgins. They don't have the Hunter Renfro. They don't have that guy right now that can break this game open. You know, Justin they, Ross. Yeah, they don't have that guy. Renfro made a huge acrobatic catch in that game as part of their comeback. Devil Sweeney was still raving about it yesterday. Will Shipley dropped after a two yard game and it's Jones again the leader of that defense who really helped bring their team together yeah. in the offseason Molly McGrath can tell us more about it in a moment but they became a much closer group in the offseason a lot of team building exercises including a conditioning drill in the carrier dome. There's a deep throw for Williams, and it's broken up. Good rally to the ball to break it up by Elijah Clark. Good rally to the ball by Clark, but a poorly thrown ball by DJ. It's underthrown. His man has separation. Antonio Williams has separation, and this is going to be a big play. Where are the chunk plays going to play? Right there. He's beat. Throw the ball out in front of him, but because it was underthrown, he had to stop. And Clark was able to just get there and knock the ball away. Well, it's the first punt of the day for Clemson for Aiden Swanson. Trevor Pena, good return man back deep for Syracuse. Good kick. Pena's going to let it bounce, and it goes out of bounds inside the five. Very well done by Swanson. The first year punters had an up and down season. Here's Molly. Sean, you mentioned there was a specific moment this offseason when Syracuse coaches and players knew that this year's team was special. During one of their hardest workouts in the summer, they were running the stairs in the dome. Most of the team was finished running, waiting on some injured players and freshman O linemen to finish their run. That's when Michael Jones joined them to encourage his teammates. He told us next thing he knew, the entire team was up. Running extra reps so that everyone finished together as a team. He said that moment was why I returned to Syracuse, not only to lead, to be part of a team that fully bought in. Sean. Yeah, the coaches talked about that as a rallying point for this squad. On first down, it's Schrader just getting some room after the 54-yard punt, which matches his career long for Swanson, beautifully positioned as well inside the five. A really nice play that time by Jeremiah Trotter. He was outside as the linebacker dove back in and made the tackle for a short game. He was the son of the former Philadelphia Eagle. Schrader, wow. great fake to Tucker, and another first down. He really set the tone yeah. with this offense from the opening drive. Well, again, you have to respect Tucker, right? So watch the defense flow with Tucker on the fake. Schrader doesn't rush it, sells it, sells it. Linebackers are all flowing with Tucker, and they leave the quarterback wide open. Remember this linebacking core playing without Barrett Carter, one of their starters who's out with the concussion protocol. That's a big loss. Every time we talk to Dabo Sweeney, uh, who's playing well for Clemson, Barrett Carter, was the first name or among the very first out of his mouth. Schrader throws a quick slant and a diving catch made by Trevor Pena. You know, the other part of that, Sean, not only are they without Carter, but as we talked to Dabo yesterday, Trenton Simpson, who is a really talented athlete, he's playing a new position this year, and he's still growing and understanding playing that will linebacker position. He was out of place and out of position last week, missed some tackles against Florida State. Play fake by Schrader. Under pressure, there'll be a holding penalty. 
clear as a bell, and now Tucker drops the ball. It doesn't matter because that was coming back. Two officials, the referee and center judge, both threw the flag. They had help from 81,000 plus. Number 57, off edge, 10 yard penalty, second down. It was 47, Wes Ho, the fullback. Yeah, they tried to go max protection, kept the fullback in, kept the tailback in. Robert Anai not happy about it. Not with his aloha spirit right no. now, a Hawaii native. Well, the negative plays, again, when Clemson gets negative plays or penalties and they get you behind the sticks, this is when they are most dangerous as a defense. Second and 15. Schrader giving a nice pocket, running out of time. Here's another flag, and Schrader's down inside the 10. Excellent coverage downfield by Clemson. Again, when you have when you have this kind of front where you can create pressure with rushing four and not blitzing, all you do, you bring four and you cover behind it. You drop seven into coverage. You keep an eye on the quarterback. You see both linebackers keeping an eye on the quarterback. But that was Tyler Davis getting there and whipping his man. He is a leader on this team. Tyler Davis having a magnificent senior season. They turned down the holding penalty and took the sack and the loss of five and now movement. And Syracuse for the first time today seems a little rattled. I'll start. Offense from the 57. The penalties have to to the goal. Dakota Davis, fifth year senior. He is 16th straight start. The last time we saw this Clemson team in person was up in Boston. And when they came out to start the third quarter, they were a much different looking football team, particularly on defense, trying to get that same kind of energy here to start the third period at home. Dabo did confirm he got after them at halftime of that game in Chestnut Hill. Schrader just wants to get out of the end zone, running for his life and dropped. Much more spirited defense. That's Trenton Simpson with the play for the Tigers. Three sacks now for Clemson. Three sacks, but it goes back to the holding penalty early in this possession. It gets them behind the sticks, and then those pass rushers can really pin their ears back and go. Uh, probably the worst possession, clearly the worst possession Syracuse has had offensively the entire ball game. Pressure on the true freshman from Australia, Max von Marburg. Munson blocked four kicks this year. Third in the country. And this is a bomb. Antonio Williams way back to his 44 to field it. Now comes back to the near side, picks up a block. And a nifty return wow. to the Syracuse 40 yard line. 55 yard punt and an 18 yard return. Just a great job also by Andrew Makuba. Now, first of all, Antonio Williams changes his direction. He's going to break a couple tackles, but watch Makuba number one. Instead of getting the illegal blindside block, he just stops and stands in front of the defender. And Clemson in business. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC, presented by Arby's. In South Carolina on homecoming. Clemson's won 13 in a row, the nation's longest active winning streak. They've won 37 straight at home. Tied for the longest in ACC history. Trying to come from behind, and Shipley is fumbled. They turn it over for the third time. Marlo Wax comes up with it. This is a good run. You can see he runs with power. Defender's going to come from the inside. He's got the ball protected. That looks like Rob Hanna, number 19, that knocks it out. His second big play. Wow. Turnovers were the story in the first half. And a big one here in the third quarter. After he was they involved on the fourth down stop, yeah. which was the only time Clemson that have been stopped on fourth down this year. They were five for five on fourth down, including one for one today, before Syracuse stopped them on downs in the second quarter. And the crowd was engaged with the defense 
Makes another huge play, and now it's Sean Tucker. Out of bounds at the 43-yard line, chased out by Nate Wiggins. Boy, some shifty hips that time by Tucker because there he was just guys in position to tackle, unblocked guys. He made a miss and turned it into a huge run. One of the best running backs in the country. Todd McShay has him ranked the fourth best running back with an eye toward the next draft, and Schrader's pass knocked down. So that's the third time that's happened today, and I made this point, I think, a game last week. My dad being an old offensive line coach, if you know you're making quick throws, and those defensive linemen are not going to rush the pass, they're going to try to go their hands up, you need to put your helmet just kind of right about the belt line or a little below. That'll bring those hands down, and you won't get those passes knocked down the line of scrimmage. Second and ten. Garrett Schrader. Pulled it down and got to the 44. It'll be third down and nine. So three turnovers, two by Uwe Ungalale. He had had only three all season prior to today. And then the fumble by Shipley. Well, right now, if you're Garrett Schrader, you got to be smart with the football because you've already accomplished one thing. And that was flipping the field. Remember, you're in terrible field position the last possession. You get the turnover. Even if you don't convert here, you've been able to flip the field again. Schrader throws, and it's incomplete off of Devon Cooper, who couldn't make a sliding catch. Would have had a first down at the Clemson 45-yard line, but couldn't make the grab. Yeah, this is a ball that probably should have been caught. It's thrown down away from the defender. I mean, that's that's a ball that needs to be caught. Well, here's Max von Marburg again. Max von Marburg. Again, you talk about in football, coaches talk about hidden yardage that shows up in special teams. Right now, Syracuse with a chance to gain a lot of that yardage back. Both punters have been excellent. Swanson had that big one moments ago that went out of bounds at the four. This is a good kick by Von Marper. 46 yards and no return. So DJ with a couple of turnovers and Shipley. The fumble on this one. The defense rose to the occasion with some help by a drop ball. Is here. Eight-year history of the college football playoff. Clemson has hoisted that trophy twice, 2016 and 18. They played for it four times, made the national championship game on two other occasions. Down today, 21 to 10. Starting from their own 11, worst starting field position of the day for the Tigers. Will Shipley, whose fumble on the last possession was the first lost fumble of his career. He's in his second season. Molly? Will Shipley was so distraught after that fumble. Instead of yelling at him, head coach Dabo Sweeney came over and told him to calm down and gave him a hug. And DJ Uyunglele also hugged him and said, I'm going to keep coming to you. I trust you. Let's bounce back from this. And that handoff is a show about trust. The third time he had put it on the ground as a fumble the first one that the opponents had recovered now, sticking with the run and it's Shipley again out to the 18 uh, and, and the problem for Clemson right now and again I know you want to be a little conservative this part of the field but no explosive plays in the passing game they've only had one completion of 20 yards or more that was to Davis Allen the tight end and there Syracuse has proven that you're not going to drive the ball right down the field on them and score and they're opportunistic when you make a mistake they've got to get some chunk plays out of their passing game at some point here in the second half bunch formation to Rui Ungale's left on third down and three three-man rush he goes deep down the middle too high and intercepted trying to get it to Jake Brinningstool and it was picked off by Jason Simmons their fourth turnover of the game. DJ does not read this safety. He thinks the middle of the field is going to be open, but the safety moves here. This is a post-snap read that DJ misses. He floats it down the middle of the field. He did not read the middle safety, and you never throw late 
down the middle, especially with a middle safety. And that time, Simmons really baited DJ into thinking the middle was going to be vacated and falls back in for the interception. Jason Simmons, Jr. from Lancaster, Texas, a transfer from New Mexico State. His first interception of the season, second of his career. He had one last year. Schrader in trouble. And a loss on the play. Meanwhile, on the sideline, the very highly touted true freshman, Cade Klubnik, is warming up. Wow. That, that actually surprises me a little bit, especially because after last week's win at Florida State, Dabo Sweeney was kind of jabbing people who said that maybe DJ shouldn't be the starter. He talked to the media about some people were anxious to take DJ's job away when he's clearly our number one quarterback. The mistake prone today. There's a pass caught over the middle by Oronde Gadsden. Short of the first down by about three. The only thing I could think about, and we don't know yet what Dabo's going to do, is maybe he's just feeling our offense needs a spark. We don't have anything going right now offensively, and we're not taking care of the football. And he's got to count on his defense now to come up with a play here on third and three. One of the things Dabo said yesterday, Todd, for DJ, the key is post-snap. Yep. Because Syracuse moves around so much. Make sure you know what you're looking at after you take the snap. It doesn't look like that's been the case. Here's a huge third down and three. Schrader forced to pull it down. Schrader fires, oh. almost intercepted. That would have been the first takeaway for Clemson. And Andrew Makuba had some room down the sideline if he could have made the catch. Yeah, this is man coverage. Now he gets protection. Watch the protection with a five-man rush. He doesn't have to get out of there, but he decides to go late on the crossing route, and Makuba almost undercuts that. And you're right. If he catches that, he's on his way to the end zone. Well, they are minus four today in the turnover margin. It looked like Uli Ungeloy just gave... Club to go pat on the helmet as if to say, good luck, go get him. We'll see. Minus four is Clemson, but very much in the game. Syracuse, I feel like they've had a chance to really up, open up some margin here in this third quarter. They have not taken advantage of it. I don't think that this is a quarterback change long term. I think it's Dabo looking for a spark and something good to happen. More truck owners are switching to... Jay Uyunglele on the sideline. And a hand for Cade Klubnik as he comes in. True freshman from Austin, Texas, out of Westlake High School. One of the top recruits in the country coming into college football this year. Has played in four of their first six games, or seven games. He hands it off to Will Shipley. We got dragged down at the 29-yard line, a gain of nine. Well, this is why Dabo's looking for a spark. I mean, look at those drives. They've not been able to do anything. See if Klubnik can get you a spark. Going a little tempo here with their offense. Good play fake. Not a great throw, but did Ngata make the catch? Yes, he did. Joseph Ngata at the 47-yard line and a first down for Clemson. Right in between the hole, between the corner and the safety. Does Ngata get under there, or does the ground help him make the catch? They're trying to go fast to eliminate the need for a replay. The replay booth didn't stop it. Shipley with some speed, then he got planted from behind at the 45-yard line. Sean, here's the other thing that's happening right now. Not only are you trying to get a spark from Klubnik, but you've got DJ on the sideline. You're letting him just relax and look and watch and maybe see the game and settle down. Again, I don't think this is a long-term move. I think Dabo just is trying to help both guys, help his offense and help his starting quarterback right now. And they had one first down in this quarter before this drive. Saw the drive chart. They needed something to change. Clearly, Uwe Ungalale against this excellent Syracuse defense, not at his best. Crowd doesn't like the spot on that run by Shipley. Again, they need chunk plays in their passing game. They've got to find a way to get some chunk yardage plays. Shipley pops. 
devours those legs and picks up the first down. Syracuse defense is impressive. That's Kayvon Dart. That undersized nose guard, number 45, stands the center, Will Putnam up, makes the tackle. Yes, it's a first down. Flag down for a false start. False start. Offense number 78. Five yard penalty. First down. Well, Dabo Sweeney. So adept in recruiting over his 15 years as the head coach, including this young man. Ranked by Sports Illustrated, rivals, prep stars, the top quarterback in the country, ESPN.com. Had him ranked number three, player of the year in Texas, one of three finalists for national player of the year, the MVP of the prestigious Elite 11 camp. He has the profile, Will Shipley, the ball carrier. Well, not only is DJ Uyunglele out of the game right now, Blake Miller, the right tackle, had that second penalty. They just took him out. Mitchell Mays has replaced him at right tackle. Well, again, Dabo just trying to eliminate the mistakes, the errors, and try to get something going here. Second and 14. We're ticking down close to two minutes in the third quarter. Klubnik taken down for a huge loss by Steve Linton. Yeah, this, this is Klubnik. Klubnik has to read the block. Now, he's going to have a guard coming out to help him right here. But he's got to read the block and stop and allow the guard to make the block. Pull up right there inside the block and try to make the throw. Don't try to outrun him because the guard has no idea where the quarterback's going. After an initial spark, they've got to reverse. Klubnik against the three-man rush on third and 25. Across the line of scrimmage, he gets hit out of bounds, and here comes the flag. Wow. A terrible penalty by Elijah Fuentes Cundiff. They had him stopped well short of the first down marker. Personal foul, number 99 of the defense. Just, just unnecessary. unnecessary. It wasn't offense. violent, but it was unnecessary. The quarterback is down. running out of bounds. And you mentioned, Sean, this is a very highly penalized team, but they were very clean in the first half. What That's a costly a one. Absolute killer. They're probably going to get the ball punted back to them. Yep. And instead, the walk-off goes to the 32. Went as Cundiff, for its shirt freshman from the Bronx. With an awful play. Phil Moffa, the running back. Flodnik. Checks it down to Moffa, and it's an incomplete pass. Leon Lowry delivered the big hit. Klubnik looked downfield for quite a while. We basically sit in the stands here, and you could hear the people blowing. Like, you got him. You yeah. got him. I don't know who they no. were looking at downfield, but they saw somebody did. Klubnik no. when did I not saw, see. When I saw it, I saw the same thing Klubnik said, which was nothing open downfield. Had a couple outlets, but that was it. On second and ten, the pistol. Maffa turning his way down to the 25-yard line. And another big third down upcoming. Third and three for Clemson. Neither team has scored here in the third quarter. Well, if you're Dabo, you're thinking right now, if we don't get this and I kick a field goal, it's a one-score game. Or do I try to capitalize and, again, seize momentum in the football game by going for it if I don't convert here? Syracuse crowding the line of scrimmage. Quarterback draw. Great call. Brandon Streeter. One of the things Streeter told us earlier in the year about Klubnik, he is very good with his feet. And now there are flags down at the end of the play. A really nice block by Marcus Tate, number 74. I think there might have been a late hit after, after the play. The play. Was over. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness number two the defense. The penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down. A nice call. It was a nice conversion at the end of the play. And that's the penalty, yeah, that's a little it. face wash at the end. Syracuse, a lack of discipline here. The defense has been outstanding. 
all day long. The penalty by Fuentes Cundiff kept this Clemson possession alive, and now in the waning seconds of this third quarter, Clemson poised to make it a one-score game. Well, you got to capitalize, right? You had third and 21, no chance of converting. Your quarterback's running out of bounds. Now new life, got to capitalize. Maffa bounces off some tacklers and has the ball to the three-yard line. It might be the last play of the quarter. Wax made the tackle with no extra polish that time. That is going to be the last play of a scoreless third quarter. Syracuse, two penalties for 10 yards in the first half and two on this drive that have been absolute killers. This on third and forever. This after a first down run. And Clemson about has won 13 in a row. 37 in a row at home. But they're down by 11. Neither team scored in the third quarter. Syracuse had just 45 seconds, uh, 45 yards of offense. Clubman got rocked by Michael Jones on second and goal from the three. A gain inside the two. Well, Klubnik is a good runner, but a much not as big in stature as DJ. I mean, he is 6'2", 195. DJ 6'4", 235. Got stood up right at the one-yard line on that play. And neither Uyunglele nor Shipley on the field right now. Shipley ordinarily gets the call when they're in close. Third down and goal from just inside the two. Mafa to the goal line. Crowd thinks it's a touchdown. The officials say no. Wow. And now a huge decision for Dabo Sweeney on fourth and goal from about six inches. It was another one of those slow mesh plays where the quarterback stayed right with the back. Maffa got it late and looked like he was going to score and got tripped up. Really has five touchdowns this year from one yard or closer. Well, we'll look at it in the replay booth. Watch how long this mesh is. Hold, hold, there he goes. Hard to see from that side of the of the pile. Here's a progressive pylon. Look at it. Ball just has to break the plane before any body part is down. Now here's the difference between Moffa and Shipley right here if you go for it. Maffa, power. Shipley, explosive and can go over the top. If you decide to go for it, give it to one of those two backs. Two different styles on this goal line run. Shipley scored the first touchdown of this game from one yard out. You know, I think that's the right call. I don't think the ball was ever extended. His head crossed the goal line, but I don't think the football ever did. That was good, solid team defense by Syracuse, not allowing Moffa to reach that ball to the goal line. Well, Syracuse defense has risen up all day long. Four takeaways, a fourth down stop, a score on defense. The only time all year Clemson got into the red zone and did not score points was on the DJ Uyunglele fumble in the first half. In the second quarter, that was returned 90 yards for a score by Jihad Carter. They have been a perfect 35 for 35 in the red zone entering today with 26 touchdowns and nine field goals. Well, I think for sure you go for it here. We just started the fourth quarter. Even if you don't make it, you put Syracuse on the one-yard line, right? And the last time they were in bad field position, they couldn't go anywhere, had to punt. You had good field position. So worst-case scenario here, you flip the field completely, and you get the ball back inside the 50. Replay taking a very long time with this. Certainly looks like they're going to send the offense back out. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. It's fourth down. And they're five out of six on fourth down this season. The one stop, the one here today in the first half. I don't know. To me, you got to believe that 
even though Moffa is in, Shipley is out. I mean, that, that's a little surprising to yeah, me. And surprised. You mentioned he's usually the guy who punches it in down close. They have Moffa behind Klubner. Shifts to the left of Klubner. Fourth and goal. Moffa has a touchdown. And they're going to go for two to make it a three-point game. And they could tie it on a field goal. So they change quarterbacks. And Klubnik delivers on this drive, and Kayvon Darton is down in the middle of that defensive line for the Orange. Well, they went with Moffa, the power back, and they ran between a great double-team block by Walker, Parks, and Blake Miller, the right guard and right tackle. Watch these two guys right here just get a great double-team at the point of attack, and Moffa's going to follow him right into the end zone. They took advantage of the bonehead penalties by Syracuse, and they get the touchdown. And that's why DJ Uyunglele is still one of your primary leaders on this football team. Very engaged on the sideline right now. And the injuries continue on the Syracuse side. Darton getting a chance to start because of the season injury, uh, ending injury to Terry Lockett. Now being helped off. That's the second time in the game he's been shaken up. Tough kid. They're playing without Garrett Williams. He put his uniform on, but did not play at all. Injured last week, a leg injury, thigh injury against NC State. Their starting cornerback, one of the best in the country. And the backup now for Kayvon Darton is Elijah Fuentes Cundiff, who had the very costly penalty on the Syracuse sideline on this, this scoring possession. Well, again, reminiscent of 2018, Syracuse had a 10-point lead in the fourth quarter. Travis Etienne scored with about 11 minutes to go to get them within three. And then that memorable drive, 94 yards at the end of the game with Etienne doing the bulk of the work. Shipley is on the field now, so there's nothing wrong with him. Big two-point try. Klubnik running out of time. Trying to scramble away, he stays on his feet, running out of time again. Throws it up for grabs, batted around, and intercepted. Wound up in the hands of Anwar Sparrow. Valiant effort by Klubnik, showing his athletic ability to keep that play alive forever, but they do not convert. Wanted to get it to Shipley quickly, but he was covered. He was not open. It was good defense by Syracuse. They forced Klubnik to throw at the last minute back towards the middle, and well defended on the two-point play. So this is what happened. You, you can't drop a pass on third down that's catchable. And then on third and 21, you cannot have this kind of penalty to extend a drive. If you're the underdog in their building and you want to win a game of this magnitude, you cannot make these kind of mistakes. you got to catch the football, and you can't have bonehead penalties. And right now, Syracuse finds themselves in a five-point game, which a few moments ago looked like they were very much in control of. Game pressure on the Syracuse offense which was sharp early on and was stagnant in the third quarter. E.T. Potter will kick off. Trevor Pena back deep. And it's a touchback. And Syracuse will start at the 25. Here's Kevin Nagandi. Sean, week eight early windows. Let's take a look at the family of networks. You got Cincinnati in control. How about Kansas storming back against Baylor? That came on ESPN2 midway through the fourth. Tennessee in complete control on the SEC network. And the UFC 280 main event coming up on pay-per-view ESPN+. Plus. Oliveira Makachev coming your way. Back to you. And a great day of football here in ABC. Texas at Oklahoma State to follow tonight. Minnesota at Penn State. This is our Dr. Pepper Championship drive game of the week, and it's been a dandy. Garrett Schrader, far sideline, caught. And a gain of five 
for Trevor Pena. Syracuse has had the ball three times in the second half and has punted all three. The key for Syracuse the rest of this game is productive plays on first down. That was a productive play. It was kind of a scramble play, but it was productive. You get behind the sticks against this defense, you're going to have trouble. Robert and I knows that. Stay ahead of the chance. Syracuse has run just 13 plays on offense. Quick pop. And very little there for Pena. Taken down by Jeremiah Trotter. A gain of one. Here's third down and four. Rondé Gadsden, your primary receiver, has been pretty quiet of late. Four catches in the ball game. He'll be lined up on an inside slot position, and when you put him there, he's usually against a safety rather than an outside corner. I'd say it's Gadsden or the running ability of Garrett Schrader right here on third floor. Garrett Schrader running the ball was very effective in the first half. They've kind of gone away from that. Just dropping back and throwing it. Throwing it over the middle. Caught! There's Gadsden. There is a flag down, however, back in the offensive backfield. Gadsden down at the 50-yard line. Here's another Syracuse penalty. Two-yard penalty. Looks like they're going to get Chris Bleich, the right guard. Beautiful job by Schrader. Watch here. See if that's where the penalty is. K.J. Henry was the guy signaling. There it is, right on the inside. 63 had his arms around K.J. Henry on the inside move. Beautiful play by Schrader to avoid pressure and get the ball to Gadsden. And now a very difficult situation on third and 14. You're still winning the game if you're Syracuse. You don't have to force a play here. You're still the team with the lead. A rush well picked up. Trader running out of room. Trotter had a hand on him and he pushed him out of bounds. It's an incomplete pass, I believe, before he crossed the boundary. You know, I'm wondering, and the Syracuse bench is wondering, why there was no penalty on that play. Trotter was in pursuit. And Trotter does a great job of forcing him to the boundary. And as he throws the ball, does he throw him down or push well, him sure down? He sure does. I mean, that's way out of bounds. I mean, you could have probably called that, potentially, particularly on that sideline. Well, let's bring in Matt Austin. Matt, what do you think? I'm a little surprised they didn't call that because they've really tightened up what they've called and that was definitely an unnecessary shove laid out of bounds. So I could have seen the follow there. Next, Mon Marburg, his punt handled by Antonio Williams and he's thrown down immediately. Well, we saw a Clemson drive extended by a penalty on the sideline. This was a Syracuse play that could have been extended, but it was not. Back at Clemson, two very similar plays. This is third and 21. Kate Klubnik is hit right as he's heading towards out of bounds. 15-yard penalty extended a drive in moments ago. Garrett Schrader on third and long gets rid of the football and is shoved out of bounds. And it's not called. Very interesting. One was called, one was not. And here's Klubnik on first down. He gets 11 to midfield and a first down. All the momentum now with Clemson still down by five. Texas and Oklahoma State coming up next from Stillwater in a big battle in the wide open Big 12. I think one of the reasons Clemson going tempo is because of the lack of depth on this defense. And here goes Shipley. They could not get him down. On a 50-yard touchdown run by Will Shipley. They'll go for two again to try to take a three-point lead.
Their first lead since it was 7 to nothing. They scored on their opening possession of the game, the first time Syracuse had allowed a score on the opponent's opening Bobby drive. Bobby will continue with the try. Wow, delay of game. So now, do you still go for two, backing it up five yards? It changes your whole complexion of a two-point play. I think you do. Yeah. Because one point at this juncture doesn't do you much, and that's why Dabo's so upset. You have to change the play, though. I mean, oh, you, for you sure. know, it's, it's not think. a three-yard play anymore. Now it's an eight-yard play. But a two-point lead at this juncture really doesn't do you much good. Three-point lead, a field goal obviously can only tie you. Right. Klubnik, he's been on the field for two possessions, two touchdowns, and now a beautiful throw to the back line of the end zone for the two points to Joseph Ngata. Well, great job by Ngata not giving up on the play. He was on the other side and just kept working the back line of the goal line as his quarterback scrambled. You can't even see Angata, but he's going to show up right in here as his quarterback scrambles. He's going to uncover on the back line of the goal line. Great elusiveness by Klubnik. He finds Angata in the back of the end zone, and they convert on the two-point. He's working on Isaiah Johnson, the new starter at corner, and Klubnik finds him. Now watch the touchdown. A missed tackle by McDonald and a bad angle by the safety, Justin Barrett. Here's the missed tackle. Unblocked guy can't make the tackle. And a bad angle by Barron, underestimating the speed of Shipley. And just like that, Clemson takes the lead. On the longest run against Syracuse this season, a 50-yard scamper by Shipley. Three yards short of the longest of his career. Clemson on a day when they are minus four in turnover margin has taken the lead. Syracuse has not scored in the second half. And they find the rhythm they had early in this one. Another BT Potter touchback. Our Aflac trivia question. Clemson's won 37 straight home games dating back to November of 2016 when they lost on the last second field goal 43-42 to Pittsburgh. We want to know what is their record at home in the last 10 seasons dating back to 2013. You and I know the answer. Yeah, we've discussed this a lot over the last couple of days. Well, this is where Garrett Schrader has to step up now. He's your leader. He's the baller. He's got to get his team organized again. Here goes Tucker bursting through. Great way to start. Get back to your stars as we talked all day long. Schrader, Tucker, and Gadsden. And very little else on offense for Syracuse. Here's the answer to the question. And if it wasn't for that one-point loss, we could be sitting here talking about like a 58-game yes. home winning streak. They lost to Florida State. Jameis Winston, the team that went on to win the national championship early in 2013. They are 56 and 1 at home. Their last 57 home games. That was the Aflac trivia question. Schrader kept it out near the 44 yard line. I think I would feed Tucker the ball a little bit more. He looks fresh right now. A little fatigue on that defense that we saw in the last possession, but Tucker looks fresh and he can make people miss. He's had only five carries the whole game. Got to get him the football some one way or another, either throw it to him or hand it to him. He's too good a player to not be a factor right now with 10 minutes left. And got away from the quarterback runs as well. It's a good fake by Schrader. And he's tripped up very close to the first down, needed to get to the 50. And he'll little march little it at the 49. Big stop by Andrew Makuba, sophomore from Austin, Texas, who spent the first 10 years of his life in Zimbabwe. Family came here as refugees to the Austin, Texas area. They escaped war-torn Democratic Republic of the Congo before they went to Zimbabwe. 
Patrick is in with their short yardage package. Max Bank, the tight end. Wes Ho, the fullback, number 47. You think four down territory here. Play clock running out. Trouble. Schrader. And now a flag for a false start. It doesn't count. They tried to trick him, Sean. They tried to go with a quick start. snap under center. Off Left guard. Five yard penalty. Third down. They got a little too cute. Right. He's giving signals, but he's really trying to get a quick snap. And you could see it was actually Wes Ho, number 47, that moved. They said the left guard, but there were a couple guys that moved early on that play. A critical mistake. He had the big holding penalty in the third quarter that infuriated Robert and I. Now it's third down and six. Schrader in the offense for Syracuse dealing with everything that Death Valley has to offer. Got to believe this safety is going to come over and help on Gadsden. Wow. What was that play? Schrader faked the handoff and Brian Brzee dumped it for a loss. And it wasn't Tucker in the backfield. It was Wes Ho who was apparently going to take a handoff or at least was the faker on that play. Well, Brzee is going to make that little move and the right tackle, Dakota Davis, misses him. He's late getting there to cut off Brzee, and Brzee blows the play up in the backfield. What do you think that play was supposed to be? I don't even know. It, it, it got blown up so quickly by uh, Brzee. It was going to be a run. Clemson, first charge, timeout. Brian Brzee. Has had so much to deal with the tragic death of his 15 year old sister, a kidney infection. And he said during the week he's ready to go, fully healthy. And he just made a huge play. Restructured pork patty. Presented by Arby's. Arby's, we have the means. Will Shipley, the 50 yard touchdown run to give Clemson its first lead since the. First quarter, Brian Brzee, the most recent big defensive play. And a little collective sigh of relief on homecoming here in Death Valley. Like 2018, Syracuse had Clemson on the ropes. Couldn't deliver the knockout punch. They still have time. But they're running out of it with eight and a half to go and another punt by Max von Marburg. Such another costly penalty against Syracuse. We saw the late hit on a third and 21, and then the false start on third and one. Punt goes out of bounds near the 15-yard line. Here's Molly McGrath. Well, Sean, you can feel the momentum shift on this Syracuse sideline. Players are hanging their heads. Coaches are having to tell them to stay positive. Keep your heads up. And remember, Dino Babers at halftime said this game would come down to mental toughness. And I do not see it on this Syracuse sideline. Players are getting really down on themselves. I think they're tired, too, particularly on defense. I thought that showed up on that jump right here. Third possession for Cade Klumpnick is the Clemson quarterback. He's led them on two touchdown drives. They haven't asked him to do very much since he's been in the game. They've had 16 runs and two passes. And you wonder how much Brandon Streeter will want to try to stretch him in this. Now that he has the lead, even though it's only three points, how much will he trust him to put the ball in the air? Took over for an ineffective. D.J. Uwe Young on the leg. A tough run. You know, we keep saying it, but it's true. Shades of 2018. In the end of that game, they just wore Syracuse out running the ball. Travis Etienne at 86 yards rushing in the fourth quarter of that game. You're rotating two backs. You're keeping them fresh. You're wearing down a thin Syracuse defense, an undersized defensive line, and you're protecting your quarterback as well. Avon Darton is back in the game. He was injured earlier. He has to be exhausted battling that big Clemson offensive line all day long, and he just made a play. One of the first things you see when a defense is fatigued is missed tackles. Guys just a, a hair late to the play and just not able to make a solid tackle. Under seven minutes to go. Out of the pistol. Maffa pretty much split time today with Shipley. They are.
pounding the run. As the 18th carry for Maffa for 93 yards. Shipley 24 rushes in a career high 162. I think this is the play of the game right here. I mean, it's third down and medium yardage. Does Brandon Streeter have Klubnik throw it? Can Syracuse get a stop? Or does Clemson maintain possession and keep that clock going? Klubnik, short throw and almost intercepted. Dangerous throw out wide. Looking for Antonio Williams, Jason Simmons. Almost picked that off, and if he did, he had nothing but green grass ahead of him. Uh, would have been the second interception of the game for Simmons. Makes a nice read zone. He's got eyes on the quarterback, and he cuts underneath the throw. It's a very safe throw, throwing that hitch route to the outside, but well played by Jason Simmons. So the Syracuse defense holds. Aiden Swanson's had a good day. Trevor Pena back for the punt, looking into the bright sunshine. Low snap handled by Swanson. And another beautiful kick. But room for Pena on the catch. And well covered by Clemson. Syracuse will start at the 19. A 51-yard boot, a return of eight by Pena. Double header coming up next, Texas and Oklahoma State. Huge game in the Big 12, and then Minnesota's at Penn State for the whiteout on Saturday Night Football. Occupied the last three weeks by Clemson. Three straight ABC primetime games. Now prime spot in the noon window, and Schrader can't go anywhere. Taken down by Jeremiah Trotter. And more of the same on offense. Syracuse effective for much of the first half. Five punts in the second half. And again, first down effectiveness. That was well played by Jeremiah Trotter there. A loss of three yards. You're behind the chains, deep in your own territory. Not easy against this Clemson defense. Robert and I has gotten a lot of credit for the success this year. Catch for a very short game by Devon Cooper. But where is Sean Tucker? Yeah. I mean, his lowest number of carries in his career is 13. That was last year. He has five today. And they have not been targeting him, it seems, in the passing game either. No, they did in the first half. They threw it to him four times in the first half. But uh, nothing here of late. Got to believe they're going to Gadsden here if they can get the, the coverage. Two defenders moving that way for Clemson. Third down and 11. Schrader, flush. Schrader runs away, has a long way to go, and gets nowhere near the 29-yard line. And that pass rush starting to affect Dino Baber's quarterback. Good coverage downfield, too. Gadsden's right here. Trying to work the middle of the field. Coming on the in route, you see the safety coming over the top to help, and that's where Schrader was looking. Nowhere to go with the football. I mean, they really only got one go-to guy in the pass game, and he was double covered that time, and Schrader had to run it. Max von Marburg to punt again. Syracuse. Down to four minutes to go. Waits till two seconds on the play clock to snap it. With the game clock running. Antonio Williams makes the fair catch at the 41-yard line. There's a flag for a hold against Syracuse. Penalty's a problem again today for the Orange. Yeah. Eight of them. Holding number 15 on the kicking team. The 10-yard penalty to be added from the end of the run. Clemson keeps the ball first down. 3.56 to go. They're starting to feel consecutive home win number 38 here at Death Valley. Yeah, heck of a football game. I think Ole Miss LSU, it's a great rivalry game. I think that's going to be a tough one for Ole Miss, even though they're undefeated and highly ranked right now. After the penalty for the hold, plus field position for Clemson on offense. Syracuse has all three timeouts left. Will Shipley with a career day now, both in a number of carries and rushing yards. 25 for 165 for the sophomore from Weddington, North Carolina. 
I mean, good things happen when he gets the football, and he gets better the longer the game goes. He's that kind of a competitor, that kind of a tough runner. He did have the fumble earlier today. Moffa has also been a factor, but right now, Kate Clubbing doing a nice job of using the clock. Going to let that play clock go down as far as he can and still keep that push coming off the ball with the run game. Remember just saw for Shipley's total yardage, receiving and rushing, and Plumnick got stopped in his tracks by Caleb Okachukwu. Tyus Gear also there. Okachukwu lost some of his gear. He's going to have to come off the field, and Syracuse has used its first time out. Yeah, they missed both guys on the end. I mean, Okachukwu's helmet was pulled off by his own time man. Out. Just Janius Gear Syracuse. pulled the helmet off. First He'll have to come out on this third down play. You don't see that very often. Face mask ripped off by one of your teammates. But the good news for Syracuse, not a penalty, which yeah. has been a problem right. for them, particularly here. In the second half, Sean McDonough, Todd Blackledge, hope you're enjoying the action. You know, it's hard, uh, they talk about in sports, to have a rivalry when one team wins just about all the yeah. time. And Clemson's 8-1 against Syracuse since Syracuse joined the ACC in 2013. But this has become an interesting rivalry. A lot of games just like this. Yeah. And Syracuse certainly was up for the challenge today, but I mean you cannot do some of the things they've done here in the second half and win in a game like this of this magnitude, uh, particularly in their stadium. So I mean, first of all, you had the 37 drop, would have extended a drop. And then the personal foul, the late hit on a third and 21. And then another personal foul with the, the face mask. They've had other penalties that have hurt themselves. And they didn't get the call on the apparent late yep. hit out of bounds by Clemson on Trotter, who hit Schrader. Klubnik just throwing it up for grabs in the end zone. Flag down in the end zone. Antenna for Bo Collins. Uh, Isaiah Johnson had the coverage. Defense number 20. We have not the said Bo Collins' team. name all day. The, the first time they went for him, now watch the left hand, or the right hand. He goes over the top of the receiver. He does make a play on the ball, but he goes through the receiver to make the play. Wow. Wow. Well, they've taken a shot at it downfield. They've been very conservative with him. They went for it on that one, and he gets the penalty, and another penalty. That's the eighth penalty in the second half for big yardage against this Syracuse team. And another that extends the possession. Fresh set of downs, clock-killing time for Clemson. You know, we talked to Shipley on first down for about seven. We talked to Dabo Sweeney yesterday. One of the things he said, he said, I really like this team one of the reasons is they're finding different ways to win we've had shootouts like they had at wake forest we've had ones where we've had to have a slugfest like nc state here's a game you should not lose the turnover margin four to nothing and be able to win a game I well mean, entering today like teams that were minus four or worse in turnover margin in any fbs game this season were 0 and 17. no should team not be has won to. a game this year at the fbs level Minus four or worse. Syracuse brought a blitz. It's Shipley for about two more. Dino Babers will use another timeout, leaving timeout. one with 2.09 to go. And one more first down for Clemson should put it away. Well, and how do you overcome that if you're Clemson as you take a look at the streak that is in question today? Yep, yeah, it's. Going to be 38 if it stays like this. And they'll have the ACC longest home winning streak record all by themselves. Breaking the mark this year with those great Bobby Bowden teams. And it would also tie for the 10th longest home winning streak in FBS history at 38 straight games. And there's a reason why Dabble Sweeney's won national championships and he's going to the College Football Hall of Fame. A lot of coaches wouldn't make the move that he made yeah. to change the quarterback. 
and he's won a lot of one possession games also since he's been the head coach. I mean, he doesn't panic in situations like this, right? He went to Klubnik. It was a conservative game plan. He said to his offensive line, his running backs, you guys got to do it. The all-time home winning streak is 58 by the Miami Hurricane team. So not for that late field goal against Pittsburgh. We could be talking about the all-time longest home winning streak. One loss at home since 2013. Third down and three. Must stop situation for Syracuse. Davis Allen the catch. And it looks like he is short of the first down. At the 26-yard line. Big play by Jacquard Carter. And Dino Babers, you need to use your timeout. Yeah, because Dabo on the other side is telling his quarterback, just relax. We're going to let this clock go down. Oh, See if they're why isn't he out? stopping the clock? I mean, you can't. If you're about to get the ball back, you can at least. Now he's going to call a timeout. They let all kinds of time yeah. come off. And I think if there's one criticism Syracuse fans have had of Dino Babers, even in this season, they don't do a great job managing the clock at the end of the game. I mean, that's just a whiff right there. Timeout, Syracuse third, final charge timeout. Yeah, obviously, you would love to save the timeout for your offense, but in this case, you got them stopped. They, they've got a fourth down decision to make. Stop the clock right 203 there. 203 was the time when he hit the ground. So they wasted 27 seconds, 25 seconds. And see, look at Dabo. He's telling his guys, look, we, we're not going to do anything. We're going to just take our time and see what they do. And then they're probably going to kick a field goal here or attempt one. say how could Clemson overcome four turnovers and find a way to win their defense has been outstanding in the second half Syracuse has had 74 yards they have two for ten on third down and then the penalties the penalties for Syracuse have offset the turnovers for Clemson well, this would be huge for BT Potter Drew Sweeney the holder 44 yard try Trying to get them to jump offside with that move. Syracuse didn't jump. Potter's kick is good. One of the great kickers in this era of college football. B.T. Potter, the fifth-year senior from Rock Hill, South Carolina, in suburban Charlotte. 44-yarder. Now Syracuse has to go the length of the field with a minute 33 to go and no timeouts and about 25 seconds fewer than they could have and should have had. Yeah, and that's why you say, why is it the that field goal so important? It's still a one-possession game, but it's the difference between looking at a potential field goal to tie the game, and now you've got to score a touchdown to be in a position to tie or win. Now, right now, Dabo Sweeney, all he's cared about is doing what we got to do to win the football game. But they have a bye week next week. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions about what he's going to do with his quarterback position now. Although I don't think he asked Cape Klubnik to do today no. what he would ask DJ. Uwe he threw four Lundin. passes. Yeah. He just needed a spark. I think Klubnik gave him that. And the running game in the offensive line took over in the second half. But again, shades of 2018, yeah. right? When Chase Price went into the game, he looked like he didn't want to throw the ball. Right. They didn't want him to throw the ball. They pounded the run with Travis Etienne. And Chase Price made a memorable play on the fourth down to keep a drive alive. Well, you've got three dudes. Again, we've said it all day. If you're Syracuse, Garrett Schrader, Sean Tucker, Aronde Gadsden. If you're going to be in a position, those guys got to make plays right here. And they really don't do a great job of throwing the ball deep down the field. They don't have that receiver. And they bring pressure! And Schrader gets blasted by K.J. Henry. Well, this that looked a lot like when Xavier Thomas drilled Eric Dungey in the final minute of 2018. This is just a whiff by Max Bang, the tight end, just completely whiffed on the block. Schrader 
Going deep, and is it a catch? No, the officials looked at each other as Damian Alford trying to make the catch on the Clemson sideline. They got plenty of help in making the call. I think he caught the ball, but landed out of bounds. You can see the right foot landed out of bounds. It was a heck of an effort by Alford on the back shoulder throw. Class under further review. Right there, the ball's in his hand. Yeah, made the catch, but I think the right foot landed out of bounds. What an effort by Alford. I don't know. I, mean, I think it, it's his left foot, if anything, Todd, that's out yeah. of bounds, right? Yep. It's his right foot. Right on the chalk there, his, huh? uh, Right along the chalk? I think that his left foot is still in the, well, that's the, the other play. They both have <laughs> they orange, have orange shoes, shoes. It's hard to tell. Hard. But that's the right foot of Alford that's on the ground his left foot still on the air the left most foot yeah, we that, can see yeah that foot is in bounds let's bring in Matt Austin Matt what do you think yeah I agree with what you guys just said he's got firm control looks like the right foot is definitely down in bounds I think this is going to be a catch wow what an effort by Alford after the sack Alford came up limping at the end of the play he's not able to play right now but what an effort on that play if it is a catch, it would be just his sixth of the year for the sophomore from Montreal. One of two Canadians on the team, Matthew Bergeron is the other, also from Quebec, the left tackle. Well, if you're Syracuse, you cannot afford to do this anymore, though. This is the first down play. This is Max Mang blocking on K.J. Henry. He t sets too wide, he takes a, a bad position, and he allows his quarterback to get drilled. I mean, right now, you have to protect your quarterback. If you're Garrett Schrader, you got to throw it away and not to take a sack, but that's not on the quarterback. That's just a missed, whiffed block by the tight end. Ideally, though, you don't want your tight end going one-on-one -on -one with either of these edge rushers. You'd rather have an offensive tackle in that position. We're still looking at it. With a minute five to go. I mean, they're trying to sort out the orange shoes like we were. Yeah, I mean, there's four shoes right there. Yeah, that's his foot. Yeah. That's and, Alford's foot. It's inbound before the left one comes down. Had in his hands. Does he take it all the way to the ground? Looks like he did. That's an incredible effort. And if it is overturned to a catch, the ball would be at the 38-yard line. Still a lot of work to do with a minute five to go. Great looks, our crew today, led as always by our producer Josh Hoffman, our director Scott Johnson. After further review, the receiver caught the ball inbounds at the 38-yard line and subsequently went out of bounds. So it'll be first and 10 from the 38. The clock to start on the snap. A big play by Alford. Well, and the good news for Syracuse, because of the review now, the, ball, the clock won't start until the snap. Normally, if you convert first down and out of bounds inside of the last two minutes, Garrett Schrader can take his time, make sure they're on the same page here. Well, they've had some dramatic last-second wins against Virginia on a field goal, Purdue on a touchdown. That's Gadsden. And now they have to hurry up. He got nine. And you think of those 30, uh, those 25 or so seconds that came off the clock. How big is that right now? Schrader checks it out. down. Tucker out of the witness protection program and has a first down at the 49-yard line. You, you got to believe that Clemson is going to pay a lot of attention to Gadsden. Is there anyone else? We saw Alford make a play. Is there anyone else besides Gadsden that can make a play? You got to put two bodies on 19 if you're Clemson. 43 seconds to go. Schrader can't take a sec. To the middle and incomplete, says the back judge. On the effort by Aronde Gadsden with Jalen Phillips in coverage. The ball was a little high. He went up, gets two hands on it. Good effort by the defender, Jalen Phillips. And as he comes down, loses control as he hits the ground. Got to secure it all the way. See that ball moving. I, 
I just think there was movement on the football. Not even close enough, apparently, to take another look at it. 35 seconds to go. Gadsden has it. 30 yard line. Stop clock to move the chains. I think you spike the football here. Unless you absolutely know your play, spike the football and get the play called that you want. It's going to start when they get the chain set. 19 yard gain. Now the center judge is running in to stop it. Art Brown. Jeff Flanagan's the, the referee. Game clock to 32 seconds. And the, and the clock will start on my signal. All right, so if you're Garrett Schrader now, they're going to start as soon as the referee gives the signal. Have the play called ready to snap as soon as he makes it ready to play. Communicate to everybody. Make sure your line knows the protection call. Again, Gadsden has been targeted on both of these plays, and he's finding holes. Three seconds game clock to 26 seconds, please. Let's go, guys. 26 seconds. That's Gatson right there. Let's go, officials. Yeah. Oh, my second. Now the clock is running. First and 10, Syracuse. Schrader throws in a traffic and intercepted. R.J. Mickens seals the victory for Clemson. Garrett Schrader has tremendous confidence in Aranda Gadsden. But Clemson was not going to let Gadsden catch another ball. Watch, there are three defenders. They're going to have eyes on Gadsden. They are not going to let him catch the football again. They circle him, they have eyes on the quarterback, and they slip right inside. And Garrett Schrader was looking one place and one place only to throw the football. As you said, Wes Goodwin and all these Clemson defenders knew. You know, when you size up Syracuse, really not a lot of weapons at the wide receiver position. It's pretty obvious at crunch time. That's where they were going to try to go. R.J. Mickens, huge play. The junior from the Dallas area. His dad was a great All-American at Texas A&M. Played 11 years in the NFL. His second interception of the season. They take an E. And they have the longest home winning streak in the history of the Atlantic Coast Conference. 38 straight wins, back to 2016. And they've won 14 in a row in all venues dating back to last year, extending the longest winning streak in the country. Here's Molly with Dabo. Coach, what was your reaction to that R.J. Mickens interception to seal the win for you? Well, we knew they had no timeouts, so we really wanted to the field was getting smaller so we could kind of play with some eyes, felt like we could turn them over. What a great play. You know, man, this is this is a special moment. A lot of adversity, but man, our team has shown they can win a lot of different ways. And today to come back, you know, we had to change quarterbacks. You know, DJ just didn't have it today. Cade came in and got it done. This was a great